In this video, we're gonna go over the new Operation Seraph Shield mission. This is the new exotic mission within Destiny 2. This is also the mission that lets you get the Revision Zero exotic pulse rifle that will ultimately have four catalysts. So it's something you definitely wanna pick up if you have season 19 of Destiny 2. First, I'm gonna go over briefly the roles that are in this mission. If you're familiar with Deepstone Crypt, I would just go ahead and fast forward to where I go over the mission itself. But for those who are new, this will be a good idea of how some of the roles work within the mission. So the mission is like if you took Deepstone Crypt and Zero Hour and they had a baby. That's really what it was. It's a super fun mission. But the roles are taken out of Deepstone Crypt. So this is a good intro for those who've never played the raid. So first off, there's the scanner role. All of these roles are augments that you get by killing vandals, and you'll notice that over the vandals, there'll be like a little icon, whether it's red, yellow, or blue, that have the different roles. The first one is scanner. Scanner allows you, well, to scan things. When you have the scanner, and again, anyone can pick this role up, you'll notice that um, there'll be areas that look like terminals that are glowing. Those will allow you to hack those areas, which will, if you do that enough time in an area, it'll open doors or allow you to proceed to go to new areas. The next role is the operator role. The operator role well, allows you to operate things. Basically, it's the red role. For this role, it will actually light up panels that you can interact with or shoot. Typically, again, these spawn platforms or open areas. Again, similar thing to scanner, except in this case, it allows you to operate or interact with things. Finally, there's suppressor. And for suppressor, again, it's the blue roll. And for that one, you'll notice when you get to certain areas, especially towards the end of the mission, if you want to be able to DPS or do damage against the bosses in those areas, you'll notice there will be three glowing what look like beach balls in each of those areas, they have like a, they're they're like highlighted and they have an aura under them. When you get the suppressor roll, you can get underneath that aura and you can shoot the boss. When you do that, it'll start suppressing suppression mechanic. And you'll also notice that the beach ball changes and is no longer glowing like it was before. Usually what you have to do is shoot three of those in succession again, going to them, shooting the boss. And once you do three of those, that allows the boss to be damageable. Again, all of these roles are roles from the Deepstone Crypt raid. So if you're familiar with these after you do this, this is a good way to get introduced to Deepstone Crypt, which again is a super fun raid. The other thing I would tell you is there's a lot of laser traps within this encounter. So make sure you're paying attention to those. Those will really trip you up. And then the only other thing is when you're done with your role, what you typically have to do is put it in this augment terminal. That's where you have to put a role if like, let's say for instance, you're a scanner, but then you want to do operator in a specific area because you have to do different roles around the same time. You can't hold two augment roles at the same time. If you put them into the augment terminal, that will actually take the role from you. And often in many of the areas, it'll also open up doors. So that'll come up repeatedly in this mission. So let's talk about the mission itself. So first off, the very beginning of the mission is like any heist that you have right now. You have those, you know, those Eye of Sauron towers that are staring at you um, that over 15 seconds, if they continue to stare at you, will kill you. So again, sprint and high and just make your way into the base. Once you're in the base, keep moving forward until you hit a launch center. You'll see it, it'll show up. The launch center, if again, if you've ever played Deep Stone Crypt before, you'll recognize this. This is the tubes that launch you into space. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is there's gonna be a vandal that's a scanner. You're gonna want to kill him and then there are three terminals that you can hack, which you will see with this scanner. Again, if you have three people in your fire team, you can all just do it really quickly. If you're trying to get the time triumph, or if you're solo, you can just walk around until you get it. Once you do that, the pods will come down and then you can head into space. Once in space, you're in the engineering section of the Sarah station. Place your augment in the augment terminal in the door. This will cause you to lose scanner and then that'll also allow you to open the door. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when you do that with these doors, there's a field that you go through where I know the person who puts it in is obviously gonna lose their augment, but when you go through the field, everyone loses their augment. So make sure that you've done whatever you need to do in the previous room before you proceed to the next room. Again, go to the next room and regain scanner, scan and hack the terminal and then head to the tunnel. That'll take you to an area where you get to scan again and then head back to the tunnel. There'll be another scanner and then you head through the door. There's a sentinel, kill him. Put scanner in again, that'll open the door and you can proceed. Again, you'll notice the theme. You'll get the scanner again. You'll scan open a vent at the top. So there'll be a vent that you go through, go through that room and that room will have lasers. So be careful about that. But then there's a terminal you can scan. Kill the Sentinel and ads. While doing this, look through the window 
to identify the correct terminal hack, there's going to be four terminals in the next area. If you pick the wrong one, it will kill you. So make sure you look through the window to know which one that you need to scan the other room because you're going to have to put your augment into the augment terminal to go through and you'll lose it. So do that, pick the correct one, and proceed forward. So now you'll enter an area that's probably the first area that's a little bit different than what you have been doing up until now. Though you'll notice that there's a bunch of ads, kill those ads, and that this room has multiple platforms you can jump on top of, and you can also get the scanner. You'll also notice there are three levels. Now, if you just go on the base level and just run in, you're gonna die, you're gonna get microwaved. Instead, what you're gonna do is, again, there's three levels. If you use a scanner at the top level, that's gonna show you which terminals inside the microwave room that you need to interact with to proceed without dying, the correct ones. The second level is going to show you the path that you need to follow. Now, you can also see this on the first level. The one thing to keep in mind is, again, if you're solo, you're gonna have to kind of memorize this or write the stuff down. If you're with a group of three, you're gonna to have to have one person stand at the top and look at the terminals to tell you which terminals to interact with. The person that you would either have in the middle or in the same level with you, not in the room, because once they go in the room, they lose the augment, but either in the middle or in the floor, at the bottom floor, they can tell you which path to follow. And then obviously, as you're, the last person would just go in there because once you go in there, you lose your augment, you won't be able to see. So proceed very carefully down the path. Make sure you're paying attention to lasers. There's lasers you have to duck in, under. There's ones you have to jump over. Make sure you pay attention to which terminals you need to hack, right, based on the person who's on the third floor, and then proceed through that room. Once you do that, that will open up the room for everyone else. So that's the way to do it. And this is, like I said, it's kind of a cool encounter. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Zero Hour because there was a floor is lava puzzle in there, and this is very similar. This next area is going to introduce you to Operator how it works. So again, grab Operator, and you'll see again, there's an active terminal. You'll see it's it's glowing red, and you'll be able to interact with it, or like with your, you know, melee it, or to shoot it, and that will allow, that will allow something to happen, whether it's a door opening, or something to advance you through the encounter. For this specific area, you're gonna take turns going through and shooting those things and then going into vents and shooting through the vents at areas that you can't access otherwise in the room to activate and move through the room to the next area. So do that a few times. There'll be a very large hive enemy with a key that'll allow you to advance to the next area. This is where you're gonna run into the first boss. And again, you have a rally flag that you can put down. This boss is fairly simple. First off, you can initially damage him. So you do a certain amount of damage and he'll put a shield up. And again, there's ads everywhere. Once he gets his shields up, what you're gonna notice is there'll be three brigs, one the right, one the middle, one the left. You need to defeat all three of those brigs to proceed. This next middle area is kind of like an interlude. It adds some story elements. So basically, you have to allow yourself to get caught by some fallen, you lose your weapons, then magically you somehow regain them on their catch. Once you break out, you'll kill more ads and you'll free some mechs to help you fight them off. Keep going until you reach the jumping puzzle, and there's always a jumping puzzle, which is the old DSC jumping puzzle with some twists in the next area. So again, pretty standard jumping puzzle. One of the things I would tell you, you need to pay attention to physics are a little bit different because you're in space, but you'll also notice that a lot of the jumping areas will require you to go down quite a bit. So don't commit to your jumps until you can see where the next area is. A lot of the areas have platforms that have red lights on them, so it's pretty easy to see them, but some of them are quite a bit down. So for instance, just make sure you know and kind of plan out your jump before you jump, especially the first one, because it's quite a bit down. You'll keep jumping down and across. Most platforms will have, like I said, little red light. Some of them will be just normal like platforms. So again, you'll need to look for that. As you're going through this, you'll notice as you get towards the end, you'll keep going. Again, don't go back because some people get stuck in this next area and think you have to go back. If you do want to go back, you can see a lot of the old DSC jumping puzzles. So if you want for nostalgic regions, you can do that. But again, what you're going to do is you see a bunch of ads, kill the ads. You'll need long range weapons to do this. The other thing is you're going to see uh, Vandal again with Operator. That's going to be important. The Operator is how you're going to proceed. You cannot make, unless you're just a god with like Shatter Skate or something like that, you cannot make it through to the next area without this. You kill that operator, go pick it up. There's gonna be three operator terminals. Two are near you, I'll show you here real quick. And then there's a third that's up towards the area you're jumping. Those will deploy platforms that will allow you to easily do those jumps. Go through, do those jumps, keep moving forward. And then at the end, you'll have a bunch of ads to clear, similar to the same area in Deep Zone Crypt, and then you proceed. There is kind of a uh, chonky boss here. It's not that bad. 
that you'll kill once you get in the station. You'll kill that, and again, you'll uh, continue to proceed. You'll get operator and scanner again, so you can get both of them, and you're gonna take turns activating panels and scanning and hacking terminals. And remember, in case you're solo, go ahead to swap the augments. Make sure you put them in the augmentation terminal. That'll allow you to swap them back and forth. Once you're through this, you're gonna learn the mechanics for the boss battle, kind of a mini boss. You're gonna get the suppressor roll. And again, for the suppressor, you have to go under the three security drones one at a time and shoot the boss to suppress him. But you'll notice you can't damage him at that point. That's because they add a little bit extra to it. They add one of those mechanical shield things, kind of like what you have in some of the Beyond Light story missions. You'll, you'll see this one's kind of in a room to the side. Go ahead and shoot that. Once you do that, you'll be able to damage the boss and get again to the actual final boss in this encounter. Now you take on Praxis. And for Praxis, you notice initially you can damage him and, and you'll, you'll notice he has three one-third damage chunks. So again, for this encounter, this is set in one of the middle encounters within Deepstone Crypt as you're crashing the station with Tanix. The mechanics are gonna be similar to what you do with the mini boss. Kill a bunch of adds, get suppressor, suppress him three times, right? And then in this case, there's gonna be three of those shielding things, one in the left, one in the middle, one in the right. Shoot those and you can do damage to him. He's not that difficult. This last counter actually isn't that difficult at all, even doing it solo. Just make sure that you can be survivable. If you can be invisible, that'd be great. But again, finish him off and that's the mission. So again, super fun mission. Um, I love how they've added elements from Deep Stone Crypt. They've added elements from some of the historical missions. And one of the things I really like is that this is a very good way to introduce people to raids. I've, I thought Bungie's always struggled with how do you do something where you can explain different roles, because you don't even do pop-ups explain what the roles are in this case, which is great. But a good way to get people babysets in the raids, because the biggest thing that people struggle with raids is mechanics. And I think giving them this sort of baby steps where they do very simple, and in fact, it's gonna bore you people who play raids normally, but give them very simple mechanics to follow and doing that in an activity like this. And again, the outside area with Deepstone Crypt, you know, going outside the station is incredible. Wish they would have uh, included the music, but besides that, it's just an incredibly fun mission and I hope you guys enjoy it. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.